Willie? Today in Brussels, defense officials from 50 countries met at NATO headquarters to discuss aid for Ukraine, specifically ammunition and air defense equipment. Before the meeting began, NATO's Secretary General told reporters, as far as NATO is concerned, Russia's anticipated offensive, coinciding with the war's one-year mark, has begun. Joining us now from Kyiv is the former president of Ukraine, Petro Poroshenko. Mr. President, thank you so much for taking time with us this morning. We appreciate it. It seems that the message out of the NATO meeting is about logistics, that Ukraine needs more ammunition and it needs it fast. Is that in line with where you see things? Exactly. And with that situation, we need a game changer and it should be delivered before the Russian offensive operation. With this situation, I am very much welcome the so-called tank coalition in the frame of, of Rammstein. And I'm happy that United States supply one battalion of Abrams, the two battalion of the Leopard, we think to Germany, Poland, Canada, Spain, Norway, Denmark, Netherlands, Portugal. I think this is the vital and one company of uh, challenger from Great Britain. And uh, together with that, definitely we need as air, the ammunition, we need red electronic warfare system, we need air defense. And at the end of the day now, this is all less effective if we do not have a jet fighter. And I'm very much happy that at least we now start to train Ukrainian pilots in uh, United Kingdom and hopefully can keep my fingers crossed in the United States because they need uh, the, uh, some a certain period of time. And just please remember that the jet market is our readiness to win. And uh, with that situation, we need to stop Russian dominance in Ukraine and air. So let's talk about Russian dominance in Ukraine, Mr. President. Well, there's been talks for several weeks and again today in Brussels about this massive multi-pronged offensive that Putin is planning. Are you seeing the beginnings of that and what are you expecting from it? I have no doubt that this has already happened. We shouldn't wait that it's happened when on the one year date on the 24th of February. No, they've concentrated the attack on Bakhmut, on uh, Avdeevka, on Ugledar. But uh, with the Ukrainian armed forces, we definitely stop and ruin uh, Russian attempt to organize the wild scale offensive operation. Definitely, we have a lack of ammunition. Definitely, we have a lack of radio electronic warfare system, but we have a one of the best of the world Ukrainian armed forces, and I'm proud that uh, it was created by me and my team since year 2014 without great support of our partners, including the U.S. But we passed this way from the Google and Blankets through the Javelin, through the up to the Patriot and up to XM Abrams. And I keep my fingers crossed we should receive also F-16. This is just uh, the way if we have more weapons, it would be shorter our way to the peace. And another uh, second factor, this is the sanction. We should cut the Russian export from $600 million billion a year to 300. We should stop Putin uh, cash flow to finance war, to finance killing of Ukraine. And with this situation, we should increase the price which Putin should pay for the war, for killing Ukrainians. And our, what, is, what means our victory? Our victory is sustainable security situation on the continent, sustainable security situation in the world. And without full membership of Ukraine in NATO, I doubt that this is possible. So, Mr. President, let me ask you uh, about those jets, about possibly F-16s. We, of course, keep seeing here, as do you, as do people across the world, images of uh, Ukrainian children, uh, Ukrainian grandmothers, Ukrainian citizens being slaughtered day in and day out by the Russians, indiscriminate shelling of apartment buildings, of playgrounds, of schools, of hospitals. How important is it for you to get those jets, to get those MiGs, to get those F-16s? How important is it to save the lives of these children who are being slaughtered every day 
uh, these grandparents that are being slaughtered every day, these civilians that are being slaughtered every day in Ukraine? This is a game changer. I have a lot of experience how to uh, communicate with Putin, and I have a two important things. Please don't trust Putin. And please don't be afraid of Putin. If you try to suspend supply for Ukraine F-16, it means that you are still afraid of Putin. Learn from Ukrainian experience. And me in there, when the Putin stay here, just five kilometers from this place in Kiev, and we are with the weapons in the hands, stopping, killing, and throw Russia away from here, we never afraid of uh, Putin. And after Bucha, after Irpin, after Mariupol, after Rubezhne, Severodonetsk, Lysychansk, Treskenets, Chernigov, what other, other evidence we need uh, for understanding that here Ukraine fighting not only for our soil, for our country, for our sovereignty, we fighting for the global freedom and global democracy. And the faster we win, the weaker would be Putin we should make a deputinize the world. And without F-16s, it takes millions of lives and years of time. And I will definitely think that this is a supply of uh, F-16 will s just save a life of a lot of Ukrainians. The former president of Ukraine, Petro Poroshenko, thank you once again for being on the show this morning. Thank we you. appreciate it.